Three faith-based questions, three faith-based answers. You're watching Faith Feature on the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Teddy Caputo, and thank you very much for tuning in to Faith Feature here on the Mars Hill Network where you'll always find hope in the journey. In our last episode, we brought you part one of our two-part faith feature with Dr. Bruce Jones on how God called him to Christian ministry. In part two, we bring you the second part of Dr. Jones's story, how God led him to marriage and how he met his wife. Let's head over to Dr. Bruce Jones. I've been asked to share my testimony. My name is Dr. Bruce Jones, and I'm on the radio here at WMHR. And I talked uh, the last time I mentioned some things about my call to ministry. Now I'd like to refresh that story and tell you my call to marriage. When I was on the way out of the Air Force, the question would be, where would I go to school? I was a novice Christian. I was now excited, having served in the Billy Graham Crusade for many, many nights. And when I talked to people at the church that I was at, they told me I could get out of the service and God was leading me out of the service, but where would I go to school? So I went to the pastor of the church down the road that I was now beginning to attend, and I told him my story. And he said to me, he said, well, look, Bruce, just hold on and let me do something for you, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Okay, so Thursday, Wednesday, I'm on my way out. Thursday, I go to see the pastor, and this is what he says to me. I got you accepted at a Bible school. What? I hadn't had a resume, nothing about my educational background, but because of my my commitment to Jesus Christ, this Bible school said they would accept me as a student. So now going back over that story, I'm not only on my way out of the service, I'm on my way to school, and that's where my story begins today. When I arrived on the campus, my wife was in the office, not at my wife at the time. And I looked at her and I said, hi, my name is uh, Dr. No, not Dr., but Lieutenant Bruce Jones. And she said, well, my name is Beth and I'm a senior. And she walked away. I thought, see, a little iffity, but that's okay. But I began to get attracted to her, very attracted to her. And uh, when, I would, when I would stand at the door and she would walk by, I'd glaze at her. She thought I was a pervert. And there was something wrong with me. But I was just, I just enamored with her. When I would sit in the library, I would look over the top of the book to see her. Now, she was a fine Christian girl. She'd grown up in a Christian home where her mother had Bible clubs and was a great committed Christian. Her father was not a Christian until she was an adult. But she, at the age of four, had accepted Christ as her personal Savior. And then at eight, recommitted her life to the Lord in a much more intelligent and understandable way. And she was at this Bible school as well. Now, I began to find out that she was at the school, but she wasn't supposed to be. Why? Well, you see, she started out with her vision to be a missionary. And after two years in the Bible college, she decided that she wanted to be a missionary, and she was studying for it. She was told by her doctor, you're really not physically equipped to be a missionary. So with sadness, she had to say, okay, then I'll just serve the Lord whatever way he wants me to which then kept her an extra year, which is the year I showed up. So when I look at this story, God prevented her from going to the mission field where I never would have been able to marry her and instead kept her there for me. Well, like I said, I became very enamored with her. And uh, during the summertime, I worked for Child Evangelism Fellowship. And while I was there at a home one night, I was talking with people and I was talking about Beth and the people who are so good, godly Christians said to me, have you ever surrendered her to the Lord and said, Lord, you can give her or take away? I thought, you know, I have never really done that. And I decided to do that. And that night I was filled with joy because I said, Lord, I love this girl, even though we're not really that close yet. I really love this girl. And if you want me to marry her, great. And if you don't, I accept it. I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do. Well, when I got back to school that fall, I had a little retreat with myself on the weekend we started. And the Lord said to me, okay, now go ask her to marry you. Whoa, that was a big surprise. 
but I really felt compelled to do that. So I prepared my proposal. I sat down with her and talked with her. And after I finished telling her, my God had led me to this and led me through that and led me to this and led me to the point where I feel I should ask her to marry me. I said, would you marry me? She said, no, I don't think so. Well, I was shocked. And I went away discouraged, depressed, and wondering, why is this? But then the Bible, which is always our resource for all the trials we ever go through, came to light to me when, when it said to me, okay, so how did I get Eve for Adam? I had to put Adam to sleep to get Eve for Adam, which means I had to take my hands off of it now. I've been led to say, I want to marry you. Now she said, no, get your hands off of it, God said. So I had changed my attitude. I wouldn't take her home last to be with her. I'd take her home first. I was casual. I wasn't indifferent to her, but I was casual. And I was, I was just thinking, I'll just have to wait now and see if God leads her to come back. Well, then one weekend, we were in choir together, and she said to me, I have something to tell you, Bruce. I said, what? She said, how about if we do a December wedding? What? I was shocked. <laughs> I had waited, and now she says that. Well, I said, I would be delighted to do that. So as it turned out, we were married in January, not December. And she has been my wife for over 62 years, and I'm deeply in love with her. And I can't imagine my life without her, although that may happen someday. But all these years, we've served the Lord together in ministry. All those places I've been and all those things I've done, God has always put my wife behind me and given me great resources and great strength. So when I look back on that, I say, what if I had been not at New York? I would never have gone to that place where I went to school. I never would have met my wife who was delayed in going, and she would never have married me in the first place. So I just want to say this as an encouragement to people. God has a plan for your Christian life. Don't mess it up with your own plans. Let me be frank. Don't decide you know better than God what's best for you. Wait on the Lord. Trust him. Pray. Ask his wisdom. He will direct your paths. He says that in the Bible. You know the promises, even as I don't have to tell you them. The promises are there. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean unto your, heart to your understanding, acknowledge him in all your ways, what will he do? Direct your paths. You have to acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct. And I will say this. I have absolutely no regrets. Yes, some places I wish I were, and I never got to. Some places I got to and wish I wasn't. But nevertheless, I was always where God wanted me to be. And that's my testimony to you today to say this whether it's making a decision about your life work or your life's mate or any other major decision or minor decision you have to be. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Ask his will be done and wait upon him for his answers. They're going to be wonderful when you look over the shoulder in the rearview mirror and see what great things God has done for you. Wow. That second story is just as good as his first. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones, for joining us here on Faith Feature. If you'd like to watch a previous episode or you'd like to stay tuned to our next episode, make sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube pages. For more digital content, make sure to follow us on all our other social media platforms or go to www.marshillnetwork.org. Until next time, I'm Teddy Caputo with the Mars Hill Network, where you'll always find hope in the journey.